Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are going to continue talking about the quantum mechanical model of the atom. So first, let's have a brief summary of atomic models. Remember Dalton, um, his atomic theory suggested that atoms are indestructible, and Thomson um, discovered the electron and put forth the plum pudding model. Uh, Rutherford discovered the nucleus, and Bohr uh, explained the hydrogen uh, atomic emission spectrum with a solar system model of the atom. So now we have to talk about some more guys. So Heisenberg's uncertainty principle was proposed by this fellow, uh, Werner Heisenberg, and in 1927 he proposed this uncertainty principle which states it is impossible to know simultaneously both the position and velocity of an electron or any other small particle. Simply stated, you cannot tell the exact position of an electron and how fast it's moving at the same time. So when you're talking about subatomic particles, again, you're talking about very, very, very small particles. Uh, an electron has a mass of 10 to the minus 31 um, kilograms. So what you're talking about here is when something is that small, if you know exactly where it is, you don't know how fast it's going. And if you know exactly how fast it's going, then you really don't know where it is. So at the time, this was a fairly radical idea, but uh, Heisenberg won the Nobel Prize in Physics in, I think, 1932 for this principle. Um, so then that leads us to another Nobel laureate physicist, Schrodinger, and he proposed a wave equation. So this is a picture of Schrodinger. His uh, Nobel Prize was with another physicist, uh, Dirac, Dirac, I think, in the 1930s, maybe 1933-ish. And so in 1926, Schrodinger developed an equation uh, that treated electrons in atoms as waves. Remember, de Broglie was the first one who mentioned that, that they could be treated as waves bound to a nucleus. And together with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it laid the foundation of modern quantum theory. So what Schrodinger was doing was writing mathematical equations that uh, explained the movement of electrons. So it describes mathematically the wave properties of electrons and other very small particles. And scientists use things called quantum numbers to describe the probability of finding an electron in an atom. So instead of uh, thinking about exact positions and locations, what uh, Schrodinger's equation does is it shows you regions where there is very high probability of finding an electron or very low probability of finding an electron. So based on Schrodinger's equation, the energy levels, it turns out, are not equally spaced like the rungs of a ladder, which Bohr proposed, but actually as you move farther from the nucleus, the electrons uh, the energy levels are closer together. So as you move out from the nucleus, lowest energy is closest to the nucleus, highest energy as, as you're moving away from the nucleus, and those energy levels do have specific energies like Bohr proposed, but what Schrodinger's equation showed is that they're not equally spaced. They get closer together the farther from the nucleus you go. So the higher the energy, the easier it's going to be for it to leave the atom. So according to this quantum mechanical model based upon Schrodinger's equation, there is no exact path for an electron to take. Instead, there are areas of high probability to find an electron and areas with low probability to find an electron. So up to this point, the summary of the atomic models was Dalton and then Thompson and then Rutherford, and then Bohr with the solar system model, and then we add to that Schrodinger, who used mathematics-based orbitals. So according to this model, the probability of finding an electron is represented by a so-called fuzzy cloud, and the shape of the cloud is showing you the region of high probability. 
to find an electron. So the cloud and the picture that results from that um, show you where the electron is about 90% of the time. And the arrangements of the electrons in atoms can be described by a series of numbers called quantum numbers, and these are derived at by solving the Schrodinger equation. So the quantum numbers specify the properties of the atomic orbitals. They specify uh, what the electrons are like that occupy these orbitals, and there are four quantum numbers. The first three quantum numbers are direct results from the Schrodinger equation, and they indicate the energy level, so the amount of energy, the shape, and the orientation of the orbitals. So the quantum numbers specify the property of the um, orbitals, and as I said in the last three, uh, the last slide, the first three are uh, the results of solving the um, Schrodinger equation, and the fourth is actually describing the spin of the electron in the atom. And if you think about it, electrons all have a negative charge, and so the spin is going to be what allows them the orientation to occupy an orbital with another electron. The spin is a fundamental state of an electron. So the four quantum numbers are the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number. And the next series of slides will explain that. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.